Games and Gimmicks, the podcast discussing video games, professional wrestling, and everything in between. I'm E. Huffy, joined by the poor-ass gamer. How it do, how it do. How, how it do. It do fine. So fine that we're here to talk about Hitman 2. That's the game we're going to talk about. Agent Hitman 47. 2. Agent 47. Can I just say how grateful I am? That the same voice actor has done this voice, Diana for the Burnwood for Diana and for Forty Seven. Just That's true. bless them for continuing, continuing, continuing. Jesus, to provide their voices for this awesome franchise, Hitman Two. We've both played it. I've finished the main story campaign, but even when you do that in this game, there's still so much more to do. So really, this is just going to be kind of our. Uh, thoughts and feelings mm-hmm. on this game. Uh, you did not play the first season of Hitman until the content came out for Hitman 2. You yeah. purchased that. You purchased the Legacy. It was like something. a gold edition, gold but edition. like then you had I had to buy the um, first season for like 20 bucks. Okay. Um, which, yeah, uh, Game of the Year uh, Legacy Edition for Hitman 1. Uh, definitely something I would recommend to just about anybody. Twenty bucks for that. I think it's standalone, even if you wanted to get that. Right. Um, but yeah, the Hitman Two content that funnels into this and all the changes that they made with that game and um, everything that's in Hitman One. Uh, it, I just think like there's a lot of great changes with getting all of that content and um, great notifications with how to like play each level in different ways. And just mixing up all that content too, as well. Um, and then when you get into, once you finish all your like Hitman One content, you got all that great stuff, all the unlocks, costumes, uh, weapons, and, and such. Even the the secondary storage locations or starting locations that you get after you play each each uh, mission. Uh, it's just, I don't think I'm gonna ever have enough time to replay every single thing in each each level, which is freaking great because i'll keep coming back and and keep playing this game right it's you want to figure when you play these games when you want to play a level when you want to play a contract you want to factor in at least an hour and a half to two hours oh yeah yeah because certainly as you're playing you're learning as you go you're you're strategizing as you're playing you're constantly saving and loading if you screw something up, mm-hmm. which is a great, I think is a great feature. I just, you know, the fact that the game evolved in this way to where like save scumming is what they used to call it. It's like, oh, you yeah. know, like, well, save scumming is actually technically like, you know, in the PS2 days when people used to save like their fantastic version of some like RPG or something like that and put it out in the internet and you could play their file. Um, but like this is great because you just get that nice interface where you get all the tiles up and you get to see that exact moment of where you fucked up and you can kind of just reload that, that spot and go back and try it again. And like that just, I'm okay with that. And that's funny because there are very few games that I would say like having to constantly go into a save menu would normally be something where I'd be like, "This, this, this is probably not a great game, but like, man, so many different ways to just relive different moments that you're playing in the game. The one thing I do want to highlight and give (laughs) so much praise to, you may remember from episodes last year, I was always harping on the first Hitman for Mm -hmm. not having fucking accents in the different countries that we went to. Yeah. In the first Hitman, you'd go to Istanbul and everybody talked like they were from Los Angeles. That's true. You know what I mean? And and then you went to Japan. Everybody had an English accent. There were no accents. They used the same like five fucking voice. Hokkaido, to be fair, was just like a a rich person's hotel, a rich person's like uh, hospital. Excuse me. Okay. But, sure. Uh, you know. Istanbul! Yeah. Everybody was wearing a turban! 
and 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 you were around a lot of big uh, crowds and stuff in yes. there too as well. So you would have so, expected that. You, you know, know, and you have you have the shop owners. You know, and I'm like, hey, welcome to my shop. Would you like to look at my wares? Like, you know, like that doesn't sound right. Sure. This game. Now, granted, I haven't played any of the Hitman One maps yet. Mm-hmm. Um, in Hitman 2, so I don't know if they've addressed that, but in the Hitman 2... I don't think they did, to be honest. Probably yeah. not. Yeah. In the Hitman 2 specific levels, hot damn, they nailed it. Absolutely. Every different country that I went to, they had the proper <laughs> accents for the area. In the Columbia one, you go to the different oh, yeah. Shops, they yeah. had it, mm-hmm. they were there. There was a level where you're in... Oh, was it... Is it Thailand? Could I be wrong with that? I can't remember all the locations. I think you're right about that. um, They do. They did a great job with that. They took everything that worked so well with the first season Mm -hmm. and brought it into this game and just improved upon that. Yeah. um, There were a couple things that I would say, uh, in general, Hitman 2 is a a pretty good improvement over what, uh, what was in Hitman 1. Again, I'm experiencing all this content at once, so it's right. a lot, a lot of stuff to take in. But even, even that being said, Hitman One didn't take me very long to play through once it, 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 it got there. Yep. Um, again, once you start following prompts and the mission stories and and the things that are in there, you just pretty much follow those things through. Um, and there's very few instances where it's leading you into like a lion's den where you can't right. get out of something or That's like. That's a great way to get you familiarized yeah. with the map, the area, mm-hmm. how people react. Yeah, Not to good. mention even the fact that we also have all of the elusive contract stuff that that comes out every every once in a while. I didn't even know and like, you know, this stuff that I, I man, I wish I had experience with Hitman One because I'm finding this out later. Like Gary Cole and Gary Busey were yeah. in Hitman yeah, One. Yeah, I forgot about Gary Busey. I saw yeah. clips of that. And I was like, yeah. man, this was just so insane. Like they had him like record like the most insane audio as himself and just put him in the game. Yeah. Um, but those things still exist in this game. Um, I played, I played the first one with Sean Beam and blew him up with the rubber ducky. Oh yeah. And the second one I didn't play. That was a, the revolutionary. There's a new one this week. Um, that's actually on Ho- Hokkaido. Okay. Uh, so it's kind of cool. They're refreshing some of the stuff from the first game too, as well I with, like that. with new content. Um, but there's one little weird thing that I want to talk about, and I think there's something that maybe you might have noticed too as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe this just has to go with uh, maybe possibly cutbacks at IOI or maybe even just um, timing in terms of the licensing that you know, because things changed hand from Square. Uh, I think that I think IOI always retained the rights to the Hitman license, the, the name, the game, and everything there too. Right. But they were working with with Square on the last game. Right. Uh, and then this game isn't published by Square, and yep. it's published pretty much by them, as far as I understand. And the um, the cutscenes. Yeah. The, the cutscenes oh, right. are, are something that it's just like, I, I fucking hated seeing them every single time. And it was, I hated them because it looked like, to me, uh, what we call in the industry, or at least if I were working in that industry, the previs. It looked like somebody had created a previs for these long run animations with like dialogue and motion capture and all this stuff. And then they either ran out of time or they decided not to do it. And then they just did these still images with like, you know, Diana Burnwood talking over it or 47. And I'm like, but then you're going to throw us in this fully active environment and everything there too. And everything's moving and then set piecing and like, but you didn't even give me the same quality of cutscenes that we had from the first game, which were actually pretty, pretty good. Um, so I thought yeah, something was wrong with the game. I did too. As I, I started did too. getting into those yeah. cutscenes. I did too. I'm like, I see this fully 3d rendered image. Mm-hmm. I'm like, it's not moving. I'm like, it's maybe panning a little bit, has slight movement, but I'm like, his lips aren't moving, or and they're I, not, yeah. I guarantee you that's a time constraint thing. I guarantee you that they like, got to a point, and like maybe it got to, this is the first thing that they're really publishing by themselves uh, for a while, or you know, since they got under out of their umbrella, Square's umbrella. Um, so like, I, you know, I got to think like a lot sort of uh hinged upon their success in the yeah. future here too as well on this game which again if there's one thing i could profess to everybody out there go buy this game give these people their money because they deserve it for yeah. producing a very 
good game, a, a quality product. I, I'm. Uh, this is the only thing I have in terms of knocking the game as a whole. Yeah. Uh, uh, but in general, like, just the creativity, the flow with where you can just start off in a in a level thinking that something's going to be so complicated for you to like when you get three four targets going and stuff like that you get to many moments in these games where you're like how the hell am i going to complete this yeah um but then it just breaks everything down in like little chunks and as long as you're doing them relatively within time of when you start the level you'll get through everything and you'll move on and you'll still you'll have a fun time doing it because Pretty much every way that those mission stories go, there's some sort of creativity with how you're killing yep. somebody. So The replay value is extremely high because there's a massive challenge list for each level. Uh, so that really helps with the replay value. Uh, the story is good. Um, I didn't when I played the last level, I didn't realize that it was the last okay. level. So when I hit that final cinematic and there was a swerve, yeah, and I go, whoa, and then the credits roll, and I go, Oh, fuck. The game's over. So where I'm at, because, okay, full disclosure, I did not fully complete the game. Yeah. Um, but I did get to a part where we saw Diana as a child. Yes. And her parents. Yep. Yep. And, like, the car and all that yep. stuff. Okay, so yep. that's where I was at. And I, yep. I was – I was so we were kind of getting more backstory on yep. the, the origins of, of her as a character. Um, but ultimately, like, I guess the overall story or overarching story of this is – so 47 has a clone mm. of a clone like so 47 is a you know manufactured assassin right and then there's a clone of him that looks, e- that looks exactly like him i don't know see that's where i'm or is lost. that the bad guy that we're following throughout the last two games i like who's you, who is that let's have you finish <laughs> the game okay all right we we'll, won't ruin it and then we'll come back to <laughs> we'll, let's table the story we'll sure. come back to the story aspect if you had played hitman one mm-hmm. if you purchase that content you do get that content for free for hitman two yeah so keep that in mind if you purchase hitman one you can bring all that content over to hitman two so i got to save up some space on my hard drive and delete uh, the first Hitman game, which was cool. Sure. Um, it has the sniper. Have you played the sniper mode yes. at all? Yeah. That's fun. It's Supposedly really fun. Supposedly we're going to get more maps, but I think you have to purchase them. I don't know how that's going to work, but it is fun. It's there cool. is co-op involved with that, so we're going to have to try yeah, that out sometime. Okay. Yeah. We, well, one yeah, a- the areas we want to venture in is obviously okay. yeah, the sniping, but uh, co-op sniper well, mode, but uh, doing the contracts. Yeah, we I got to set contract. something up there. We got to try that out, yeah. see if we can set up some challenges for each other. to uh, Even if if it's just a random thing where one of us goes in, does it, and then like you stream it later by yourself and like you experiencing that, totally yeah. fine. That's, That's that that'd that be fun funny. too. So yeah, like I I don't know, like Hitman. Um, you we can. I I think like what comes what what's what's great about this game is just those moments where. You're not sure if you're gonna pull off what you're about to try to try to do. Right. I think that's one of the coolest things about it is that there's this little level of just being unsure if whatever you're like, I'm gonna throw this knife. I'm gonna throw this knife right at the bad guy's head. Uh, is that other NPC like too close or like you know like is the other guy gonna walk back into this room right as I'm doing? Like there's so many like moments of trying to. Just, I guess, have this comp- a complex algorithm in your head of like, what's gonna happen next if I do this one action? Right. Um. And and that's what's just so funny about it is that like everything is kind of calm and great until you get to that moment where you're right next to the bad guy. Yeah. Your target and he's in bright red and I'm like, I gotta stab him. <laughs> but like, how am I gonna do this yeah. without anybody seeing him? What's the nearest receptacle where I could put his body? What? Well, you know, like, can I push him off that guardrail? Like. Yeah. It's they, God, they did such a great job with updating what the previous games were. Right, absolutely. Because uh, you know, um, you had a, the time. I think this was this is this is really cool. You you picked up the uh, the re- remaster of Blood Money and Absolution. Yeah. What do so you think they, about that? They out of nowhere announced that hey, next week we're gonna release 
Yeah, we redid uh, remastered Blood Money and Absolution. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. I hadn't played Absolution, obviously, since PS3. And I remember um, you talking about, about it. You know, that was a mixed bag. But Blood Money, that was the first Hitman game I actually played all the way through beginning to end. And that's one of my all-time favorite video games. So, And I had already purchased a quote-unquote remastered of Blood Money on the PS3 back in the day that oh, came with PlayStation yeah, Plus. Yeah. That, was like, that was a long time ago. Sure. So... I, it, it got announced, and I said, okay, let's go on the store. Let's see how much it is. Let's get this thing. You know, it'll be fun. It'll be good. Um, <laughs> It's $60. Really? Yeah. So I saw the price tag, Oof. and I'm like, oh, okay. Um, I've got my <laughs> – I got credit from Christmas. You know, I can use it. And I'm like, I really love Blood Money. And what else is, is out right you know, now that you – Yeah, I mean, I did, you know, you know Tomb Raider's out there. There are some other ones that I do want to play, but I was like, oh, fuck it. Let's just do it. You yeah. know, who knows when it's going to sure. go on sale. So I will say these games have never looked and never run better. Cool. They are Ooh. running at a silky smooth 60 frames a second. <laughs> They, I think they slightly retweaked the blood money controls just ever so slightly to make them a little more user friendly, but it more, it's the same menu system. They don't the have any, like the, the weapon toss stuff, right? Technically they, they have, uh, like what you coins, have in the current ones. They have the coin thing. Okay. You can toss a coin. You have a coin. You have an unlimited supply nice. of a coin that you can throw. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so blood money, what, what? Hit the first Hitman. I say the first Hitman. The first PlayStation 4 Hitman was the result of taking everything that worked well in Blood Money and everything that worked well in Absolution mm. and blending them together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what we got. Yep. So when you play Blood Money, you're gonna see a lot of oh yeah, I see where they got that stuff. Yep. When you play Absolution, you're gonna go God, a lot of this shit sucks, so but I see a lot of the technicalities that they yep. pulled from yep. that. The uh, the instinct mm -hmm. and the awareness of the NPCs and uh, even some of the aspects of yeah distraction and stealth just yeah. by itself yeah because yeah. uh, absolution was more of a linear beginning to end wasn't really open world they drop you in a really small map and you had to take out a certain person and things so um, but they look incredible they run silky smooth. Um, so granted with my credit, I paid about $35 for it. Not bad. So, and I only played the first level for each game cause I just wanted to see what it looked like and how it ran. Yeah. I was extremely impressed. You can see a couple of clips on our YouTube page, yes. but full disclosure, they down convert that to 30 frames. Sure. Um, on yeah, YouTube, yeah. So you're really not seeing how good it truly looks. That's, uh, your projector that, that stuff runs. Like that put out outputs all that stuff outputs and looks smooth like that. That was up here. Yeah. On oh, the TV. Up here. Okay. Yeah. yeah I mean, I mean, sense. God knows the TV. I don't know if the TV. Actually but even does still, legitimately. Yeah. But from what that can display, it was incredible. Huh. I mean, it was unbelievable. And it's it's funny to think like I played that game. Uh, I remember that game. Excuse me. Wasn't on PS3 right away, or it wasn't on. It wasn't. It might have not been, but I remember it was on like. PC and Xbox 360 originally. Blood yeah, Blood oh, Money. Oh, yeah. And I picked that up on PC. Uh, one, of, one of the first games that, like, we had always loved that Hitman ga game. I think, like, it was, it was funny just kind of thinking back about the series and, like, the original Hitman, uh, even just Hitman 2. Uh, that was a big one. I, I remember times of you, you guys, like, we used to play that in your basement at your parents' house. Um, that was probably blood money. Yeah, a lot it, of blood. It, it might have been yeah. a mixture of those two because I, yeah, I, I remember the two, and I remember yeah, those games particularly. But you know, like looking back at how they've changed so much from those original games to where they are right now, um, and just more or less making these like really complex interactions with all the NPCs that show up in this world. That's. It, that's the thing. They, they kind of compounded everything. They made things even more complex than where they started out with. Right. Um, but that's a good thing. Like they, like I said, the best of, I didn't think about that until now, the best of what blood money offered in terms of narrative and I events and things like that too. And then all the updates that absolution provided to the yeah. system of making things really made this current version of, of Hitman and Hitman two. So, right. 
Um, yeah. And to those of you who are talking are very confused about what I'm talking. Yes, there is a second Hitman 2. There is both a second <laughs> Hitman and a second Hitman 2. So, like, you know, lots of reboots and a lot of similar names. Yeah. But, like, they're all, like, eventually when we get to where we are in 2018 or 2019, excuse me, these games are really good. Like, they, they reformulated and made them even better as they kept going. You have to think of the Hitman games for this generation of consoles as the reboot. Yeah. Out, you know, yeah. Everything else. They're ca- it's almost like starting over. But um, yeah, it, when it comes to the remastered of the two games, um, if you've never played them before, absolutely worth the money for sure. Um, if you have played them before, you probably could wait for a sale. Did um, you feel like Absolution made any marked tr- changes from what it was before? Because you played it before, right? When not, it wasn't. I can't really tell because the level that I played was the introductory tutorial level. Which so, is kind of like the way. Easy. Yeah. 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 Uh, the next level is the, if I remember right, is the Godforsaken. It's either the hotel or Chinatown. And oh, yeah. That, this yeah. Absolution mm-hmm. Hard. I do remember that is a few of those. Fucking frustrating game because they have this bizarre. They have the uh, when you are about to get noticed in your disguise from the current Hitman games, you get this little like needle that points and lets you know that hey, somebody's looking at you. They're getting distracted. Yep. In Absolution, that happens every fucking time, no matter what disguise you're wearing. Oh. So in, in these games, our current games, you have a disguise as a uh, waiter. Yep. You won't be recognized by the majority of the waiters with the exception of the manager. Yes, Or, you exact. know, the important people. Very, very, like, nice ways of yes. formulating that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Solution, you disguise yourself as the waiter. Fucking everybody's going to know really? you're not a waiter. It's funny they didn't get that, so you know? So you have yeah. this meter that it's called like a blend in meter that you hold and he'll ever so slightly tilt his head down and cover his oh, eye. Oh God, I remember. Or, lo- or like people. he's like chopping things at the, yes, you know, yes. at the kitchen. And it would drain that meter. And then when you were out, you were fucking out. And so you couldn't blend so in So it made no sense to disguise yourself as anything because you couldn't S- typically So blend you'll, in. you'll have to tell me if when you get into these further parts of, of that game, yes. right? Yes, I'll be curious they did to that. see how. I mean, at the end of the day, I did enjoy the game because it was very different compared mm-hmm. to what Hitman. They wanted to try something different with that title, and I get that. So, yeah, I'm interested to see how the harder parts of the game play out. I, like I said, I haven't played it since PlayStation 3. It's been a few years. Uh, Blood Money, I typically play every so often. That's always a fun one of mine. Um, again, same thing. Played the intro level. Can't really gauge too much of how uh, what's different aside from just little controller enhancements to make it a little easier. And even just probably graphically, like you said, too. Like yeah, everything looks great. a little Boy. bit more smooth. But, yeah, yeah, it's interesting to think, like, you know, what what – we're in this whole dynamic of, of taking video games that, you know, look, the, the Spyro collection and all the, uh, uh, you know, PlayStation is you know, Shadow of the Classes. And we're going back to look at games that oh, we've had. Arkham games. Arkham games. They, they yeah. had that on the holiday sale. Uh, Arkham City and Arkham Asylum. And granted, it was a terrible remaster job. But $5. Like if you Crazy. Never, even though the remaster job's not good, like you, oh my God, pick that up five dollars, sure. like holy yeah. shit. Yeah. It, it, it's it, it's interesting because like, you know, as as the movie industry has gone through reboots and refreshes and sequels and you know, all that stuff, it's interesting seeing the the video game industry responding in that in kind oh, in yeah. a different way and being like. You know, we could take those old games and kind of make make them better for this next generation of people. And like, in some ways, that's good. Sometimes it isn't good. Uh, You know, personally, I never even understand why anybody was so uh, crazy about Crash Bandicoot. Like, who the hell cares? Like, Crash Bandicoot was like (laughs) to me like the most worthless PlayStation character I've ever seen. I never. It was so lame. I played that shit once. When I got a PlayStation, the only reason I got a PlayStation was to play the WWF SmackDown games. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I was like, oh, yeah, Crash Bandicoot. It's like the PlayStation it's Mario. Fucking I horrible. popped that shit in. I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and they remastered that shit? Yeah. What yeah. is there to... Oh, no. I, and then, like, yeah. some, things like, some things like that, like, look, you can say a lot. Uh, going back to PlayStation, 
level quality games and being like, you know, why did the PlayStation Classic fail so so bad when they really sit and knocked it down to like thirty, forty dollars or some crazy shit in like a month? Yeah. Because most of those games from that that cycle are not very good. Oh. But there is something to be said about the fact that if you take like modern controls and graphics and and things to those old school games, like you might be able to take something like Blood Money or Absolution, and those weren't even old games. Yeah. Um, and make them better. So right. I mean. That's the weird trend we're seeing actually in video games as of as of late is a lot of developers who release something and maybe it's because they weren't ready at the time and then coming back six months later and being like or a year later and being like, well, hey, well, we got a new update and we fixed the game and like No Man's Sky did that. Uh, the Halo collection was something on the PC and, and Xbox side that released broken and is yeah. now apparently much better. Um and then we have these games, you know, yeah. we have these Hitman games that like maybe they weren't super uh, tight when they were released, but now they're nice and neat again. And, you know, why not yeah. at the same time too? like 60 bucks, though? Ooh, that's, yeah, it, that's a hard it ask, is I steep. guess. Yeah. That's why I say, like, if you're new, if, yep. it, if you're new to the genre in those games, I've never played them. Absolutely worth the $60 price point, because if you think about it, Absolution, when that was released at the time, was $60 and Blood Money yeah. was probably 50. And you're getting two full getting games, two full long games. But if uh, and Absolution has the replay value with challenges and whatnot, mm-hmm. whereas Blood Money, not so much. No. But if you've played both those games before, you probably could wait. Sure. Could wait for a sale. And like I've said on previous podcasts, like getting God of War for twelve dollars, I feel bad about that sometimes. <laughs> when I think about <laughs> yeah, like yeah. when I think about games that like really I should be playing paying full price for because I like to give the developers my money when they did a great yeah. job with something. Right. Um, but yeah, like. I just hope that from this, because the only thing that worried me a little bit about Hitman 2 was, like, they were discounting this game really quickly. Really quickly. Right after it came out. And, like, it's, like, now my, maybe it's just, like, our personal job is that we should just start getting more people to play this game. Yeah. Because if we don't, who knows if they're going to make another one. I mean, like, if they're discounting it less than a month after the game came out, then, you know, somebody's got to be covering their bottom line with that. And I want them to be continuing to make... Or Hitman games because they're fun. Or if anything, just keep adding the content to. Yeah, and actually games. make it like a seasonal thing, uh, like the content like you were trying to do with the first game, which is what I think they they navigated a lot better into that with this one, with yeah. how you open up the dashboard in Hitman Two, and you really have like here's the current things that are going on, here's your contract menu, here's the elusive contract, you can jump right into all that stuff if you have the hitman one content you can go back back into that the prologue like there is a even extra dlc thing that i have yet to get into too as well that's after the game um so like there's a lot of a lot of great content um but yeah i want to i want to see that they'll keep updating it add more things to this actual season make it more in line with you know it's different because they, they have to they have to navigate out of that whole we're doing these things as a series, like one episode after the other, to now like here's a full game, but we're just gonna spice in things right. afterwards too. Yep, so yep. I like I do you know, I I did the whole episode model first time around. It was cool. It sounded like you liked it at the time. I did. Yeah. Uh, because what was great was you were given a destination in your, you know, contract. But the replay value was so high because you had all the challenges. You spent a good month, maybe two, mm-hmm. playing that level over and over and over. And then by the time the next one got released, you're like, fuck yeah, I got yeah. another location to go to. That whereas, makes sense. Yeah. Whereas this one, since you get it all at the go, I played through it all. But I'm kind of like, oh, okay, now which ones do I go back to? Right. Where instead I was focused on one location for at least a month. Huh. So it has its positives and it has its negatives. I at this point, I kind of lean towards episodic model. I didn't yeah. like how the pricing worked out for. Yeah, me, the pricing structure was stupid. But I enjoyed it. how it worked. Yeah, I think I think that's 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 a good way of looking at it. Like, yeah, you'll actually digest all the content all at once, and like, um, you know, it's unfortunate that like really this year has been a big plated year of video games. Yeah. Uh, well, too much uh, as far as 
content that we've all enjoyed and even just like making time to go and and, and play through these large <laughs> large away. games um but yeah that's a good point like you know have have the time to actually like go through every one of those side missions and and see all the different weird contraptions or way that yes. they assassinate people like that that gives more value to that it ensured that you checked out as much as you possibly could in yeah. each location whereas with this one now that it's all available in the open i don't know if i'll get as deep with these as i did the first and that's first fair game. because every time i've been uh, uh, presented with the option to replay the level and and do a different story i'm like nope move on and yeah, i i usually just like just nope let's let's keep the story going let's let's yeah. figure out what happens and but now that the story's done now I feel that okay. Now let's go back, yeah. Redo these levels and hit the rest of those challenges. And see what happens. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I I, I gotta hope. Uh, you know, uh, I was talking to you about this a little bit earlier. Uh, I picked up one of IOI's classic games, uh, Freedom Fighters, yep. which uh, is. I'm gonna be streaming that later on the uh, Twitch uh, channel at some point in the week, but. Um, I gotta hope. I don't know if they retain the rights as uh, certain things that they worked on prior to all the stuff with Square and who who has all those rights to different games. But I gotta hope that they're also working on something else too as well. Yeah. That like, you know, like look at look at a company like Bungie. Um, they uh, got out of the whole thing with um, Activision. They're no longer with them anymore. Uh, but they retain the rights to Destiny. It's a very yeah. similar story to what IOI ended up doing too, as well. And I, I gotta hope maybe that just gives them a lot more uh, creative freedom that they're gonna move on to things that they don't wouldn't otherwise have been able to do. And it, it's that's the cool thing is that like usually once these development uh, companies get untethered from their publishers, they usually do something really fucking cool. So. Um, yeah, I gotta. Uh, maybe I'm hoping for a Freedom Fighters too, but you know, Fingers especially crossed. in this, especially in this politically charged climate <laughs> of ours of having uh, Americans that live in uh, a war-torn Manhattan and live in sewers and come out to fight the Russians because they've overtaken our country. <laughs> I think that sounds like a pretty good story for today, but I don't know. Maybe it's maybe too. It's topical. They may be working on it. Maybe too topical, I guess, as far as that. But um, yeah, I don't know. Any other thoughts about Hitman Two there? No, I say in the old school, old school, give it a shot. Give it a try. Yes, we. Um, this is, is two give it a shots, folks, here. Two give it a shots. And if you really are unsure, then start with Blood Money and Absolution. Sure. No, scratch that. Start with Hitman 1. Go with it. Uh, yeah. Like the, the, the 2017, 2016. Yeah, you can get me. that cheap. You really, really can get that cheap, especially the Game of the Year edition. It's just as fun. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, rounds up. Hitman 2. Uh, check us out on all of our places, gamesandgimmicks.com. We provide links to all the places we're located. You guys know where Spotify, Google Play, iTunes. Um, uh, uh, what? Potomatic. Spotify. I said it's Potomatic. That's yeah. it. You know, all those Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Vero. Search for Eric Huffy. That's the only place that I'm at, um, but, but we're everywhere else. He's very selective, folks. I am very, I am very selective, but that's where you'll see my nice, lovely little captures it's good. for any retro game pickups that I grab. It's or good because like you're that. not on Twitter because that's the death of humanity. Oh, yeah. That is just that is a picture into the sad, sad state of uh, the vocal minority. Um <laughs> Yeah, it's wow. A, it's a void. It is. Yeah. It's really bad. <laughs> like, yeah, if you ever, if you want to enjoy life, don't, yeah. just stay away from Twitter. Yeah, stay I agree. Stay away from there. Follow us on other places. Anywhere, if we're there, anyways, regardless, even though humanity is such a shithole, Instagram. we're there. Instagram. I, I put a lot of pretty videos and, and things pretty on videos, there. Pretty pictures. Check out, you know, the website's great. The YouTube page is fantastic. We have some great video content. Going to keep it going. Yep. And that's all we got for this one. So subscribe, share, like, review, do all the fun stuff that we require you to do. And on top of all that, just have fun. Yes. With everything. Have fun, folks.